Hey, so if you're thinking of buying the new CPython internals book, I thought I would spend a few minutes just showing you what's inside the book, what to expect, what you can do with it, and kind of just really kind of give a bit of a sneak peek in terms of uh, yeah, what you get for your what you get for your money. So let's um, have a look. I should be recording my screen and everything. Um, so the book is about 400 pages long. Um, it doesn't contain a huge amount of code snippets, but there's more sort of diagrams and illustrations. The goal of the book is to take you through CPython, the CPython compiler, the interpreter, the grammar, the language, how it handles things like memory, multiprocessing, uh, asynchronous concurrency, uh, objects and types, the standard library testing, like loads of stuff that's kind of bundled into CPython. Uh, do with this what you will. If you if you want to read the book because you want to just you're just curious and you just want to know how C Python works, that's cool. Some people are reading it because they're kind of more advanced programmers and they either write extensions or they work on extension modules, or they want to optimize code that they've written for Python that heavily uses C. If you're just a pure Python programmer and you don't write C extensions, the book is useful anyway because it covers a whole bunch of advanced topics. Um, even if you don't know C as well, uh, you don't need to know C to use this book. If you just know Python, there is a uh, uh, an appendix, uh, which is basically a introduction to C for Python programmers. Um, gets written by Jim Anderson, and he kind of goes through like the C language structures and just like C in an hour, basically. <laughs> um, so. What's in the book? The goal with the book is that you download a, the latest copy of the C Python source code, which over the time of writing is 3.9.0 beta 3, which literally came out last night. I'm just updating the book now. And you run the source code and you compile the source code. And then as we kind of go through the book, I'll explain like how C Python works, how it looks at, uh, how it reads your code, how it parses it, how it compiles it, how it structures it, how it runs it, um, how it shares resources between processes and memory and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of different chapters going on here. Um, first off, we look at like how to get a copy of the source code. And then in the next uh, chapter, I talk about a setting up a development environment that really works for you. So if you have a Python development environment already, whether that's PyCharm or VS Code or um, something like Atom or Sublime or even Vim or Emacs, then that tool set's not necessarily going to work for CPython because CPython is primarily written in C and it's a different tool chain. So the first chapter we kind of talk about, okay, how do you get set up with a C development environment, in particular one that's good for CPython. Um, and depending on whether you're using Windows, Mac or Linux, I've got some recommendations. Um, and some steps for setting things up as well as uh, so for example if you're using uh, VS Code then I've written a whole bunch of templates you can use to kind of get the compilation stages up and running uh, if you're using something like C Lion for example uh, which is the JetBrains uh, C C++ IDE then you know how to get that up all, all up and running um, and I've got sample projects that help you navigate the code and help you get kind of building your own custom versions of CPython and then uh, Vim as well, which is pretty cool. In the next uh, chapter, we cover compiling CPython from source. Um, there's a few things to go through here, and I kind of cover off uh, Mac OS, Linux, and, and Windows, as you'd expect, but also not just here's how to compile it, but here's how to compile it properly um, with all the libraries linked and everything enabled, SSL support, uh, tickle, TK, everything like that. All bundled into your build and also how to do things like the profile guided optimization build and um, how that works why it works um, also the the Windows uh, section in particular um, goes through how to compile using Visual Studio or how to compile in the command line uh, using the uh, the batch scripts uh, and then how to do a lot of the activities on Windows I will say that you can do everything in this book on Windows as well as on Linux and Mac. Um, so including recompiling, including like playing with the grammar, uh, working with the syntax, stuff like that. Uh, I've also got in here a section on uh, Make, if you're not familiar with Make, but there's a primer on uh, Make and how it works as well as a cat uh, catalog of all the different Make targets that are bundled in and what they do and 
and how to use them. It comes in really useful as you kind of go through the go through the book. Uh, in the next chapter, we look at the language and grammar. So it's kind of breaking apart Python's language, uh, the syntax, and how it's and how it's structured, how language is defined, and then we go through that in terms of these things called railroad diagrams, uh, which kind of help you visualize um, different types of grammar. This has just been updated because 3.9 uh, Python 3.9 has a new parser, um, which is important because the grammar definitions have actually changed uh, completely for the first time in like 20 years or something. Um, like two months ago, it's been updated. So there's a new peg, um, basically the new peg parser that's bundled into Python 3.9. So this has been now been updated to explain the, the peg parser and how that works. Um, how the um, how the par uh, the grammar is parsed and how structures work, and then I talk about things like tokens and the tokenizer. In this section, in particular, we talk about um, like how you can make your own changes to the grammar and how the grammar works. In the next chapter, and then throughout the book, we're actually going to build on a proper example, which I can show you now. It's a bit bigger. So this is like a custom compiled version of Python, and I'll show you how to do this in the book. But basically, um, we introduce a new uh, uh, comparison operator, which is like squiggly equals or tilde equals, uh, and we call it the almost equal operator. And the idea is that if you have 1.000, like is that almost equal to 1.0001, for example, uh, which it would be. So it kind of we explain like how you would do not equals equals but more or less equals and how to do rounding and how to update the syntax and stuff like that. So I show you how to kind of build on top of your Python knowledge um, and actually modify the Python runtime, which is just a bit of fun but a good uh, a good teaching mechanism as well. Uh, talk about the configuration of Python and how that is all structured, all up to date for three point nine. Um, the lexing and parsing of the code with syntax trees in particular and how um, concrete, concrete syntax trees and abstract syntax trees uh, work and this needs to be updated so I'm still working on this section for the peg um, but basically how the AST is generated and um, how your Python code works. There are some utilities that come with the book as well that help you to visualize um, Python code and language structures and I've also written some tools to help you visualize and navigate through abstract syntax trees. Um, a concept which maybe you've come across um, but it's one that's heavily used in uh, linters for example or um, tools that reformat your code like uh, code formatters. Um, so this is one of the tools I talked about called InstaViz and then in this chapter I'll kind of walk you through step by step how to modify the grammar to support this new almost equal operator, uh, how to recompile Python with the new grammar, and then dig into the compiler. So in the compiler chapter, we talk about how Python code is uh, compiled from scratch, how that works, um, what compiler units are, frame blocks, um, and then how compiler flags are configured and used throughout the, um, throughout the compiler. I talk about something called symbol tables and, and how they relate to the actual Python runtime. Uh, and again, I've kind of got some um, symbol table uh, visualization tools, which are included in the samples. So if you go and download the samples from GitHub, um, then I'll show you how to navigate symbol tables and, and how they work within your application. And then the sort of core compilation program, uh, process for CPython and how it generates um, and assembles bytecode from an abstract syntax tree. So all of those concepts, if you've never heard of concrete syntax trees or abstract syntax trees or control flow graphs or uh, bytecode, you've never heard of those things, I step through exactly what they are, how they work, why they're important uh, and why they exist. So you can kind of learn all of those techniques. Um, for all of this stuff, I've kind of got breakouts to uh, the actual code itself. So any point if I reference a function or a snippet, uh, you just click on that and it'll take you straight to the source code uh, and you can navigate to the function that I'm referring to. If you play along with um, your IDE and you want to navigate, then you can see the references from the IDE as well. So basically, um, 
This is more like a, a guide to show you how CPython works, uh, how the assembler works, and how the assembler is structured. A lot of stuff in this chapter. Uh, the compiler is a pretty tricky chapter, but like I talk about in the introduction, um, you know, you probably want to take your time with that chapter. And this one, this one's a uh, a bit of a beast. Uh, it's like how the evaluation loop works, how Python like evaluates your the bytecode and actually runs the code. Um, so we talk about frame stacks and and value stacks and thread state and how the thread state operates, and how frame objects are initialized and how they're evaluated. Um, throughout this one, I kind of relate it back to um, these uh, frame diagrams and how the frame diagrams. Um, work and how they're evaluated. In this chapter in particular there are um, some little scripts that I've included as examples to help you visualize what's actually happening. Um, so in this one for example it's like a, a frame stack uh, printout that shows you uh, just as you would in like a really old style computer uh, it can kind of print out exactly what the computer is doing at any time uh, and you can see the frame stack and everything that's happening within the code. Um, so yeah, that's the. this is all about value stacks. In this chapter, I talk about memory management, so how memory allocation works in C. That's just a, a bit of a primer to explain. It's important to know how it works in C because C Python is written in C and it's kind of constrained by the same um, rules of the C compiler. Um, but talk about how dynamic memory management works in uh, Python, in C Python in particular, how the memory allocators works, and then these concepts called blocks, pools, and arenas, um, and basically how Python um, manages the memory heap and how it allocates and deallocates Python objects uh, in the runtime. If you work on big applications um, or applications that consume a lot of memory, this, this sort of stuff is important to important to know um, and because it's quite complicated uh, this chapter in particular heavily uses a lot of uh, a lot of diagrams I then talk about in the next section um, uh, reference counting and how the reference counter works and then how the garbage collector works in C Python and some just little tools you can use to um, help you understand what untrackable objects are and the uh, mark and sweep operation and how that works and just some optimizations you can make in the garbage collector. The next chapter is on parallelism and concurrency, talking about how okay, so Python can do one thing per CPU and um, on the thread state and on the interpreter there's this lock called the global interpreter lock um, but Python does actually let you do parallel tasks using the multiprocessing module um, and also there's ways of doing concurrent tasks as well using either async or uh, things like the threading module for example. So basically talk about how that actually works. Um, so under the hood, what is parallelism, what is concurrency, what are the differences, how a process is structured, um, what owns the memory, what owns the instructions, um, where do the pointers belong, and then why is that? Why does that matter? Uh, and to help explain this one, actually, I've used a couple of simple samples. One is just a simple calculation to convert uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and then the other one is a um, slightly more practical example, which is a TCP port scanner. Um, and we basically go through and implement that in multi-processing and multi-threading and async I/O, and then compare like what's more performant and which one runs faster and why. So uh, in this one I talk about multiprocessing, how uh, child processes are spawned, why they have overhead, what the overhead looks like, um, and then how semaphores work, how pipes and queues work, uh, and why you should use them and what you should use them for, uh, and how to avoid things like deadlocks and stuff like that. So. This chapter in particular is very practical if you're ever thinking about doing any multiprocessing um, or just concurrent or parallel programming in Python. It's good to have an understanding of how this stuff works. Um, and then we talk about the GIL and, and how the GIL works and places that the GIL doesn't have an impact. Um, so IO bound activities like um, network port usage or disk IO, for example, and why that's not actually locking the system. 
uh, in objects and types, we talk about, um, I did a few types, but how the type type works, how objects, uh, the object model in Python, uh, how that works, and then go through some actual built-in types like bools and longs, the Unicode string types, how the string type works, um, how, what UTF-8 and UTF-16 is, why you need to care, um, ASCII compatibility, storage uh, and encoding and, and byte order markers and a whole bunch of stuff that if you do a lot of string processing becomes really important. So walk through that in this, in this chapter. And dictionaries, um, how Python dictionaries work, how they are performant um, and efficient. So we kind of talk about all of those things. We kind of have a short chapter on the standard library what's the Python module, what's the C module, uh, and why, and how are they structured. If you wanted to write your own modules in the standard library, like how would you do that and where would it go? And then talk about the test suite. So this all kind of links back to the example we put at the beginning of the book, which is about adding this almost equal operator. And when I explain the string type, I'll show you how to make a case insensitive um, matching and then how to actually write a test for that and where that test should go. All this stuff would give you the tools you needed to, um, you know, go and contribute to the CPython project or write CPython extension modules. Or if you're working on a um, project that heavily uses C extension modules like uh, NumPy, for example, um, and you wanted to contribute to NumPy or work on NumPy, uh, all the stuff you would have learned so far would be heavily useful in, in that kind of approach. And then the last few chapters are really kind of practical tools you need for, okay, so I've either got C extension modules, I want to test C Python itself, how do you debug it? Uh, and in this chapter in particular, um, I go through the debuggers and visual debuggers, how to configure them properly, um, which is actually quite tricky. Uh, so like, here's the best practice for setting that up, here's what works well, here's how to actually use the output to your favor, um, and also here's some third party tools you can download to help you do the debugging. And then in the next chapter, we look at benchmarking, profiling, and tracing, and then how you can benchmark uh, C Python, how much, how you can benchmark Python, pure Python code, and um, like why one version of Python might be faster than another, how to actually test that, and then how to use the performance suite to kind of like compare benchmarks, create benchmarks, um, and then also do things like uh, micro benchmarks for like a particular operation that you're trying to optimize. Um, and then I talk about how to do uh, visualizing profilers and how to kind of visualize profile data, both using some free tools like SnakeViz or if you're using um, uh, PyCharm Pro, for example, then how to use the C profile um, manager. And then we talk about Dtrace, which is awesome and super useful how to integrate that into c-line there's a lot of stuff in this book as you can see and then um in our conclusion talk about c extensions um how to use the knowledge that you've learned in this book and apply it to contributing to the c python project if that's where you want to go and like what kind of things you would need to know um and then like i said at the beginning there's a appendix here taking you through the uh, c like teaching you c basically uh, in a nutshell, I wouldn't go and you wouldn't categorize yourself as a C programmer after reading this chapter, but it gives you enough information to help you read the C code uh, that you'll get throughout the book. So yeah, that's basically the idea. And um, keen for feedback, uh, please go and check it out and let me know how you get on.